Good afternoon and welcome to Toledo Rotary. Thank you all for attending today, both here and in person at the library and those of you that chose to attend by Zoom. We welcome all of you. I'd like to start today's meeting with a moment of silence in honor of our longtime Rotarian, Dean Roberts, who passed away on Tuesday, October 25th. Dean was a proud member for over 48 years and highly involved in our Disability Services Committee. And if any of you are interested, his uh, services tomorrow at Reeve Funeral Home from uh, 11 to 1, if you'd like to attend. So if we could uh, take a moment, please. Thank you. Now would be a great time for you to check into social media. If you're not, haven't liked us or are not following us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, please do so now. Then I urge you to turn down your ringers for the remainder of the program. At this time, I'd like to ask Secretary Treasurer Pat Sheehan to come to the podium to deliver reflection and Bob Anthor to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the blessings of in-person fellowship with our friends and fellow Rotarians. Today, with our vocational theme, we give thanks for the opportunity to work and ask that you remind us to support those in our community who are seeking employment. While we won't be together next week, please remind us to take a moment to honor our veterans and the sacrifices they made to give us a good life. Finally, we ask that you make our Halloween celebration safe and fun for everyone. Amen. Thank you so much, Pat and Bob. As we begin our meeting, I'd like to thank and acknowledge uh, our Monday meeting sponsor, Focus CFO, and fellow Rotarian Fred Danhauser. We'd also like to thank Rotarian Adam Cassie of Keep Toledo Lucas County Beautiful for being our green sponsor this month and assisting us with the composting uh, initiative that we're working on. And if Adam could join me for a second here at the podium to give us an update, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, the update is good. We are still at a perfect score for the food waste that we're sending to Go Zero. Uh, I talked with them recently, and they have an estimate of 100, 112 pounds that they have collected from us already. And it's only been a couple of weeks, so that is a, uh, a great thing that we're doing, getting all of that sent to the composting. And Go Zero did send us a bag of their compost. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's nice to see the final product. It's a great product. Uh, so everything that we're putting in the uh, recycle, the compost bins, this is what it ends up being. Uh, and it's got about a 70% a uh, reduction in, in the volume once we compost it. So actually, this is about, and about what we've created so far. Uh, and we've saved quite a bit of space in the landfill. Uh, often at Keep Toledo Lucas County Beautiful, people ask us what is the number one thing that they can do to combat global warming. Global warming seems like this huge thing that nobody, one individual, can, can really have an impact on. Uh, a number of months ago, we had a speaker on plant-rich diets. That's one thing. The other is send less food to the landfill. So we're doing a great job. Uh, and also keep Toledo Lucas County beautiful. We are just a small nonprofit uh, and we have been the green sponsor. I am excited because I have to keep an eye on my budget that we do have a new green sponsor. Uh, Mary Mancini has graciously stepped up as the sponsor for November. We are looking for a December sponsor as well. Uh, you can talk to myself or Jackie uh, to learn more about that uh, and keep up the good work. Thanks. Thank you, Adam. Does anyone have any guests with them today? Or we have visiting Rotarians. I think we have one in the room. If you'd like to come up to the floor, Mike, and introduce yourself. <laughs> Pull it down. Feel 
little short now. <laughs> um, well, my name is Luna Rose. I come from the Galleon Club. I'm actually in Toledo on maternity. So, um, look forward to having some more meetings with you guys. And I'm actually going to potentially be considering transferring over while I'm here in Toledo and get everything settled. So, yeah. All right. Welcome, Luna. Next up, we have Kurt Church of the uh, International Services and the Peace Committee Chair to give us an update on the peace conference that we're helping to host. Well, Walt told me I have to use this pointer. No, no, no. It's on? Okay, perfect. Um, you may not know this, but uh, Rotary International, if you've been watching the slides, has added peace as a new area of focus. With the help of Chuck Stocking, the Toledo Club went about submitting an application to become a designated participant in the Rotary Action Club for Peace. We received notification on August 22nd, 2022, that we've been accepted and received a certificate related to that accomplishment. Some of the basic uh, responsibilities and requirements of the action group is to educate, empower, and engage members. So when the opportunity came to partner with district leadership to organize and promote a peace conference, we went into action. Along with Dist District 6600, its peace committee, the YWCA of Illyria, the Illyria uh, Rotary Club, the YWCA of Northwest Ohio, and the University of Toledo, thanks to Heather Carnes, um, I present to you a peace conference to be held at the University of Toledo College of Law on November 19th, 2022, from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. As you can see up here, we have Daniel Reinhardt, PhD, um, a retired police lieutenant who will be discussing the transforming, uh, transforming police culture and the leadership to promote peace. Um, second, we have Thomas L. Brown, who's the Director of Religious and Minority Affairs for my Mayor Muriel Bowser at, in Washington, D.C., and he'll be discussing Imagine Sustaining Peace in Uncommon Times. And then lastly, Billy Joe White, the owner of White Rose Tattoo. After the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, in which a citizen of Ohio went and took their car through the crowd, he decided to dedicate part of his time in covering up racist and um, hateful tattoos for free. Um, these will be three keynote speakers. The, I, the schedule for the day is not quite set, but there'll be three keynote speakers, lunch, and then breakout sessions. Um, one sec here. Oops, wrong, wrong papers. Those are hers. Oops, sorry, Sierra, you're not ready. Uh, there will be four breakout sessions repeated twice. You may choose two during the afternoon. The break breakout and session sessions will include equity with Rotarian Lisa McDuffie as a panelist, the police impact, which follows, uh, well, I can't remember his name now, but anyway, follows the retired lieutenant um, for a 20 minute operetta entitled Blue. You may have seen some uh, advertisements about Blue here in town. Um, and to discuss the, the contents, the faith community and the aftermath of violence for families. Um, there'll be panelists from several religious organizations and then the court system and families, uh, which Rotarian Judy Lubb will join us as a panelist. You can sign up by going to the spoke and go to register now, which will take you to DACDB and go through the process on there. And there'll, there'll even be a calendar invite once you're registered, so you can add it to your calendar for November 19th, 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. I'd like to see you know as many as we can of all of you at the conference. And also, I do know that they are looking for volunteers to either like help with being room monitors, um, guiding people to the right location, registration. So if anyone's interested, please reach out to Kurt or Jackie. That'd be great. Next up, we have Sierra Hutton, co-chair of our Membership Engagement Committee to introduce our new uh, membership uh, development project. Okay. 
it's rather quiet in this room for it being like a networking day. It almost seems like everyone's just really tired. So to get you all very pumped up for this, I will just give you a little insight on what I was for Halloween this morning. And it goes a little something like this with a little bit of hawk mania. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about this morning, for Halloween, I was Hulk Hogan. So you can imagine that. I have plenty of photos I'd be happy to share. Um, and I did ride a bike for 45 minutes in sunglasses and a mustache. So you guys should now be pumped up and very excited for my, my next few minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Heck yeah, brother. So, all right, you guys, we are really excited to announce this new uh, recruitment campaign that we have going on. So you may remember right before COVID, we had something very similar to this, um, where we worked on bringing, every Rotarian kind of worked on bringing new guests, and then any Rotarian um, that brought in a new person that became a Rotarian got um, into a drawing for a free lunch. So we are doing something very similar called Imagine One to go along with this year's um, theme overall with Rotary. So as you go along the next few months through the end of the Rotary year, we're gonna ask you to start bringing more guests. Think about who would be helpful maybe for your contact book, who would be helpful for your business, um, who might be helpful for a friend's business in this room, and you might learn more today about what could be helpful for that. So take those ideas out of here, um, look through your contact book, and then bring them to a meeting and follow up with them. And if they have questions, they're more than welcome to come to any of our um, networking groups that we have outside of here. It doesn't have to be a lunch meeting on a Monday. It could be a coffee, a happy hour, take them to bowling, whatever you think might get them involved a little bit more, what they might like. Um, there's plenty of places to bring them. So bring them along and then follow up with them. Um, have them talk to Jackie about signing up and what that looks like. And then you will be entered into a raffle for free lunches next year. So you have until the end of this rotary year. And then once we get through this rotary year, we will draw for that person and you'll get lunches all next year if you're the winner. So you have a little pamphlet on your uh, little wrap card here on your table. Um, if you would like extras, we have extras, but otherwise, we're really excited to be doing this, and we hope one of you in this room is the lucky free lunch winner. So, thanks, y'all. Thank you, Sierra, and thanks for all your help in creating that rat card. Now I'd like to ask Casey Hulk to come up to do an introduction for a coat drive that we'll be participating in. Thank you, President Cindy. And our RU Services Committee is supporting a coat drive this year. And the coat drive is going to support uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Toledo. Uh, so a, a great partnership opportunity for us uh, with, with this. So for the next five weeks through December 6th, uh, we'll be collecting coats. And uh, we're looking for something very specific in our coats, uh, new coats. Uh, sizes seven to eight through adult large. Um, and we want those to, to be gender neutral too. So probably staying away from that, the hot pinks and, and those kinds of things. Um, but it is a great opportunity to support uh, people in our community that are uh, you know, needing coats uh, you know, th this winter. So the, the timing is good because uh, our time is running out here uh, weather-wise. Um, so, and I'm also going to show up here. Uh, there, there are some locations uh, to to drop off coats, and, and and you can look at this. This may be convenient for you. Um, however, we're, we're going to make this really easy for our group, um, and and we'll have an additional drop off here at Rotary at our meetings. Uh, so, our I, I don't believe we're meeting next week, but in in the following uh, weeks. We'll be able to drop off coats here, and we'll make sure the Youth Services Committee will make sure those kit, those coats get in the right places. So I think that is the details. Any any questions? I'd uh, be happy to, to answer any. Um, otherwise, we, we appreciate your support. Or, new, coats? new coats. Yes. Sizes again. Uh, sizes seven eight seven slash eight through adult large. And we'll be sharing the, this flyer. This flyer is pretty easy to read. I've gone to a couple stores. I went to Target and uh, Marshalls. And it's a challenge to find gender neutral. I mean, the, you know, the, right. 
flap on the guys is different from the right. girls. That's a good point. So yeah, I, I think you know, doing our best to find gender neutral, if it's not possible, I'm sure they'll, they'll find a home. So yeah, thank you. Super, thank you. And just a little side note, um, thank you, Casey. The company Design Netics, um, they are going to match the number of coats that are collected for this uh, coat drive. So we, we, we have an opportunity to give a lot of coats to the Boys and Girls Club. So thank you, Casey. Well, now I have some um, little acknowledgments to give. I'd like to recognize the following individuals on uh, celebrating perfect attendance for this Rotary year so far. And if you are here today, I'd like you to stand up. So first off, we have Bob Harold, who has perfect attendance for 29 years so far. Uh, Dennis Isabel, and Dennis, if you're on Zoom, you feel free to stand up in your office. <laughs> uh, Gary Murphy. <laughs> uh, Bob, Bob Reichert has 52 years of perfect attendance so far. And Nelson Schaefer, who I'm assuming is either on Zoom or he'll be making up at another Rotary meeting. He's very good at doing that. So congratulations to all of you. And we have some special member anniversaries to celebrate, too. So from July 1st, we have many people celebrating 30-plus years as a Toledo Rotarian. Uh, Tom Backoff, Steve Boyce, Bob DiNardo, I know he's here in the room, Ed DeVage, John Ehrman, Father Rowe, Brad Rubini, Tom Walton, and John Wasserman. So let's give them all a good round of applause. And even more to celebrate, 40 years of membership in our club. John Clement, David Effler, Dick Epstein, Reg Jackson, Bob Reichert, Tommy Romer, Chuck Schaub, Bruce Seeger, Chuck Stocking, and Yuval Zalowick. Please, if you're in the room, stand up and let's give you all a round. Way to go. Congratulations and thank you for all that you do for our club. I'd like to take a moment to bring you up to date on um, some successes of one, our one, wonderful Rotarian. Some of you that have been in the club for a while might remember Sister Marianne Culpert, who joined our club in 2006 and was a member for about 10 years. She resigned when she was called to move to Rome. She served on the board um, of directors as well while she was a member. She was a wonderful woman, or is a wonderful woman, I should say, and is a textbook example of a person who lives the rotary motto of service above self every day. And I'm just going to read this little excerpt. Sister Miriam Culpert has been elected as the 11th Superior General of the Congregation. The general chapter met on Saturday, October 15th, after periods of prayer, reflection, and consultation. Sister Miriam is from the Toledo region of the Chardon province and has served as a general assistant since 2016. After congratulating Sister, the chapter delegates and Sister went to the chapel, chapel to sing the magnificent and gratitude for the blessings of the election and for Sister's generous gift of self for the congregation. Um, she was a really wonderful woman who was uh, very active in our club and just an overall very sweet person. So I'd like to give her a little round of applause even though she's not here. This past week, the nominating committee, led by past president Bob DiNardo, met to review and nominate a slate of three, board, uh, three members to the board of directors and one member to vice president to serve as president in Rotary Year 2526. Please keep an eye out this week for a special email that will give the um, bio info of the individuals that have been um, nominated and to know, too, that you as well can nominate people if you'd like to. Um, there'll be a petition form. So ballots will be sent out the end of November in the spoke and election results will be published on December 15th. Uh, this process is really important to our club to make sure that we select good leadership going forward and we would appreciate everyone's participation in this. 
my last remarks right now. We've raised $2,432 so far for our Polio Plus campaign, and we've decided to keep it open until November 15th in the hopes that we'll raise a little bit more towards our goal of $10,000. So if you've already donated, thank you very much. If you'd like to donate again, that'd be great. But if you would like to, you can do so um, on the website, in the spoke. And I, don't, I think, Jackie, do we have that QR code here today? Okay, she'll get it to you if you'd like to donate. Um, so we still have a little bit more time, and we are hoping to be able to get that match of $10,000 towards Polio Plus. And last but not least, I'd like to uh, invite our facilitators for today. Luke King will be coming up. Um, he'll, uh, he is the chairman of the Vocational Leo, Services Leo, Committee. Leo. <laughs> and with his help um, from Heather Carnes, who is the liaison, they put together a program for today. Hello everyone, good afternoon, happy Halloween. Um, the Vocational Services Committee is excited to uh, help facilitate another networking lunch. Leo, not, that we, Leo, Leo. not that we don't network, we don't often have an opportunity to get into um, more detailed questions or nuances about what we do at work and how, that's how things are impacted by our role in Rotary, so we are excited to be doing that today. Um, the last time we held a lunch like this, it was in May, and so for those who were not here at that lunch um, during that meeting, I just want to go ahead and, and give an overview about how this will work. It's a lot like speed dating. That's a nice reference, not what we're doing, but that's a nice reference. Um, anyway, uh, Luke will be coming up to uh, keep time and to keep everything moving, and when we, when we begin, um, the person a person at the table, and if you don't have a career, a vocational services person at your table, the person wearing the most blue will go first. Uh, so take a minute to figure out who that is. Um, and we'll ask people to talk about themselves and the work they do or the organizations they're a part of for two to three minutes. Luke will keep time, and like I said, he will let us know when we need to um, change. And then at the table, you'll remain at the table and move to the next person. So this can be dutifully around the table, or you can you know, pick and choose who goes next. Um, for those that aren't especially comfortable talking about themselves, there's a list of questions in the middle of the table. And those can be prompts. Um, or if you run out of things to say and you, you just want to go down the list and answer the questions, that's, that works well too. For those that participated last time, we have different prompts this time. So you won't be answering the same questions. Um, and hopefully you're talking a little, uh, to a little bit of a different group um, based on those that are at your table. Let me see. I think that covers the instructions. Does anyone have questions before we get started? Okay. Total? I don't know, Luke. When are you going to... So it's, it'll be two to three minutes per person. I'll just be kind of sensing out the room. Uh, but yeah, plan on two to three minutes. And if I can keep track of time and ring the bell. It's <laughs> that, is the <laughs> that is the uh, trick. That is the trick. Yes, plan on that, OK? Two to three minutes. Let me. This is what it sounds like for those who don't know. <laughs> All right. That means go to the next person. All right. All right. We so off? why don't we begin right now? Go. There's that magical button. Well, good afternoon, everyone. At this time, I ask that uh, I have asked all of you to unmute to participate. I ask those of you who are able, if you would uh, turn on your video so that we can participate, just like we were in our meeting around the table, enjoying rot uh, Rotary Fellowship and getting to know what you um, each other. So, excuse me, I do have the same list of questions here that everyone else in the room does. Try and bring you the, uh, the same ex the same variance as we have in room here. So, let's start out. Uh, where do you work and what organization are you involved in? 
I am not on the appropriate committee, and I am not wearing any whatsoever that I can tell. But I will go ahead just to uh, um, just so you guys have an idea how this is going to work. So, where do I work? What organization am I involved in? Well, my primary employer is Sunpoint IT Solutions, uh, um, the San Francisco Bay, California area, and um, and yes, that commute is, is uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I work from home, but I do work for that organization, which supports IT sub, uh, small and medium, large, and a lot of consulting companies in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. We do some work down in Florida as well, and uh, we do help a lot of other IT companies throughout the country. Um, oh. Our cloud-based, we do a lot of, of cloud migrations. Our job and our motto is getting you your data center out of your office, getting all that uh, big expensive computer junk out of your office and into the cloud. Uh, organizations that I'm involved in, uh, obviously I am involved in Club 44, the greatest rotary club in the planet. I am also the... <laughs> a, <laughs> I am also uh, Eagle Scout, member of the National Eagle Scout Association. Uh, this is Jason's mother. Who am I speaking with? Uh, hello, and welcome to the weekly meeting of Rotary Club 44. Um, sure. We are speaking to you live with our club from the... Uh, Downtown. Uh, yeah, my husband's actually paying like this bill. So if it has to do with this bill, I'll give the message to Tom. So is that what it's regarding? One, please. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mute that account. Okay, we've gone ahead and muted that account. So let's just all stay muted and I'll bring you back up as uh, as needed. So anyway, um, gotta love live television. So, and I am a video director at Cedar Creek Church at our Finley and our South Toledo campuses. Opened our Finley campus and have been doing this and working in production for about 10 years. And uh, of course, I have the, I am blessed to be behind the golden microphone of our club. So that is pretty much me. I am waiting for the bell so we're going to move on to the next person here. Um, Walter, you're next on my list. Where do you work and where organizations are you involved in? Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> well, I'm 80. <laughs> where I'm working now is right where you see me, which uh, currently I've got uh, two basic things I'm doing. Uh, number one, I assist Jackie uh, by scheduling um, the reflection and the uh, pledge slash sing-along, patriotic sing-along. And I also um, coordinate the program, which means, you know, getting the slides and the PowerPoint and all that sort of stuff. And then on a regular weekly basis, I do the PowerPoint. If you see the beginning of the pre-meeting PowerPoint, which starts in the room at about 11.30 and runs until, uh, until uh, Cindy uh, moves to the lectern. Uh, I do that PowerPoint and I also do the agenda PowerPoint and that's the one you watch as you're seeing the program of the meeting unfold. Uh, create the graphics for that and coordinate that with uh, Cindy and with uh, Jackie, and who else is speaking? Uh, I just got off the phone a moment ago with uh, the gentleman who is uh, uh, doing the program on November 14th. That's our next meeting. And uh, is, he's a pilot for Delta. He's a good friend of Father Ron's. He's worked with Father Ron. I think he went to school with Father Ron. And um, so we have his bio and we have a picture which you'll see on the end of this meeting it shows what uh and it has mm -hmm. his uh, the title of his presentation but there's a guy he's a 180th person and uh, mm -hmm. you'll want to make sure you're here for that meeting because i think he's he's uh 20 i think 22 or 23 years in uh, the air force he is a current delta 
pilot, flies Boeings. And um, I think it's going to be an interesting meeting because he's going to talk about uh, the um, what's happened to the airline industry since 9-11 and what COVID effects there were on that industry as well. So it should be a very interesting meeting. So I encourage everybody to attend and, and uh, you know, it'll be here on Zoom. It'll be live in person. Uh, the best thing is live in person, but Zoom works pretty well for us. So we, we see some folks here that we might not see. Otherwise, let me shut off the phone. Um, see, otherwise that we wouldn't. The other thing I do is uh, you cut me off when you want to, Matt. Uh, the other thing I do. This would be a good time, Walter. We should probably move on to Dennis. Let's do that. It sounds like a good so, move. Dennis, uh, where do you work? What organization you're involved in, and what or, and what problems does your organization solve? Dennis may be solving a problem right now. <laughs> uh, Dennis, are you with us? I can unmute you. All righty, uh, Fran, are you with us? I know you may. All righty, Fran. I'd love to little. I'd, I'd love everyone on our call to hear a little about what you're doing now, um, what organizations you may be involved in, and uh, anything that that organization may be trying to solve. Well, I haven't been too involved in anything recently, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons um, uh, I'm not attending today is that I had a, an early morning appointment and I just got home um, about 11.15, so I didn't think I could make it in time for Rotary. So anyhow, um, I'm just enjoying the fall season here at home and have lots of family around to keep me out of mischief. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to get back to attending Rotary in person. That is awesome, Fran. Well, your presence is definitely missed here, but we can are you glad see? to Can you see my face? We cannot. Your video well, appears to be well, off right I'll now. I'll tell you the reason I don't want my face shown today is that I have a little great-grandson that came to visit me the other day, and he was playing on, in the playroom with the toys, and when his mm -hmm. mother said it was time to go home, I said, well, Wyatt, I got to have a hug before you go. And he jumped up and he ran over to my place. I was sitting on a chair there and his head hit my cheekbone. And I have a black and blue size mark about the size of a silver dollar. <laughs> so I hope by the next time you see me, why I'll be back to normal. Oh, Fran, you always look lo lovely, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. We'll respect your, uh, I, I call that a war wound. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Gary, are you with us this morning or this afternoon? Oh, you're muted, Gary, but that's normal. Let me hit that magic button there. There you go. Got it. Uh, where do you work? What organizations you involved in? Problems your organization solves? And any challenges facing your organization? That's great. Um, I'm uh, serving as uh, CEO of a med tech company in, uh, here in Toledo that we spun out of uh, ProMedica Innovations. Uh, we are uh, creating devices that help clear out arteries in our clogged arteries in our heart and in our in our legs and arms. The company is called Infinity Angioplasty Company, and. Um, we are uh, in the process of uh, going through a capital raise to take our company to the next phase. That's one of the biggest challenges is raising capital in this kind of market. But I also serve as uh, an executive in residence for ProMedic Innovations um, uh, team and, uh, and help, uh, help ProMedica look at um, digital innovations as well as device and diagnostic and, uh, and therapeutic innovations that come through the 13 or so hospitals, of course, that they um, they have in their uh, in their portfolio here. And I joined Rotary right at the beginning, uh, just a couple of months before mm -hmm. COVID. Um, and uh, so I started the network. I, I, I was new back to Northwest Ohio. I'd been away for many, many years. My wife and mm -hmm. I moved back here uh, and uh, joined. I got to about three meetings and then we went remote. 
Uh, so it's really been a challenge. I've been back to a couple, but I, I, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to getting more of a regular cadence to getting, uh, to getting back into the meetings and, and building that, uh, that community again. Awesome. Well, we are glad that you were able to meet. We're glad that everyone is able to meet on our Zoom experience. Um, you know, it's, it's I think it's really awesome to have that option, by the way, because, you know, sometimes you just backed up to uh, to some other obligation right till about one minute to 12 and you can't get away to get down there. And at least you can still participate in the meeting. It's really nice. Thank you for doing that, Matt. Not a problem. We are glad that we are able to do this. Um, so not every club has all the resources. All righty. Um, I'm not sure who this is. Jay Drees, number six. It, Tell us a little. Yeah, hi, hi, everyone. It's Jean Drees. Um, hi, Jean. So, and that's my UT login. I don't know. I was downloading a, another version of Zoom. Um, so, um, Franny, I'm sure um, you're going to be okay. Sorry to hear about that. And I apologize. I took a call. I think you had to mute me um, relative to a ProMedica bill. So that's good. We got to get that paid. Um, I am over at UTMC. I am, uh, Dennis was my golf partner. So Dennis, hi. Uh, that was a blast this summer. But over at UTMC, I am, um, uh, was recruited over to work with the Department of Psychiatry, all the behavioral health and substance use disorder programs. So I've been here about three months. It took close to a year to get the details right, but i um, happy to be part of the UTMC Health Science Campus now. Um, I joined Rotary about 10 years ago. Um, uh, thinking back, I, I took the seat of our CEO at Harbor Behavioral Healthcare. At the time, our board decided that of the leadership team, uh, I would not be the interim CEO. That went to John Betts, but I would be the face of Harbor. So Dale Shreve uh, stepped away from uh, Rotary and took a national position down in uh, Florida for Mental Health Corporations of America. And uh, I was uh, asked to interface and join Rotary. So I uh, have enjoyed my time. My kids are growing up. I'm not sure what the, the last question was, but um, I'm co-chairing with Sierra, who spoke today, the Membership mm -hmm. and Engagement Committee. And um, sadly, I was on another call and I, I missed her comments, but um we just really are hoping to get everybody engaged and um, participating more. And I think these little breakout sessions really do help, even if we don't need each other's business services. I think just getting to know uh -huh. people on a more intimate basis, closer knit basis is important um, to have people feel a better sense of belonging. And Gary, I hope we get to meet in person soon. So um, I guess that's it. Um, Cindy uh, had tapped me to do that because my kids are growing up and my husband's always working. And so, um, here we are, and uh, if you've never golfed with Dennis, I suggest everyone on the call do it. It is a blast. I had so much fun again in Rotary Golf. Thanks. Well, we are absolutely glad that you're here as well. And the beautiful thing is, if you miss any part of today's meeting, I will be posting in a few minutes uh, where you can go to get this recording. So, all righty, we are, let's see. Da, 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 da. I believe that's everybody still on the call. All righty. Next question, how have you found Rotary Principles impacting your career? Well, so for some of us, it might just be how Rotary Principles are impacting our life. So um, we'll go back around the circle quickly. Everybody got 30 seconds. Walter, can we start with you, please? All right, we'll come back to Walter. Dennis, are you with us? Can you tell us how you found Rotary Principles impacting your career? All right, hopefully it's Fran. How about you? Oh, Rotary I'm Principles here. impacting your career? Come again with the question. I was asking, how have you found Rotary Principles impacting your career and or your life? Well, I just uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be an honorary member of Rotary. I think it's very important that um, it's a wonderful way to connect with people of all uh, ways of life and, and uh, vocations of life. And I just feel very uh, fortunate to be able to say 
I'm a member of Toledo Rotary. Awesome, and we are glad to have you. Walter, did you catch the question? Yes, sure did. Um, boy, thank you, Fran. That was, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we do. Uh, I've been around since uh, 83, and um, networking, networking. You meet so many people in Rotary that are far afield from your own field. Now, I was a broadcaster, and... Uh, I met, for instance, I met Fran's husband, Dick. Probably would never have met Dick Anderson had I not been a Rotarian. So the, the networking enables you to be so um, broad beyond your own field. You get to know people, you get to meet, greet, have lunch with, and um, terrific. It's just terrific. So um, if you... If, go and do some work with the district, District 6600, um, you you begin to broaden and meet people uh, that you otherwise would never have have met there as well. So uh, not only is it here in Toledo, it can be all over Northwest Ohio. So good deal. So, uh, and I think the Rotary four-way test is a good way to live your life. Matt? Thank you, sir. I love you guys' answers. Um, let's see. Gary, anything you can add to that? Uh, how have you found Rotary Principles impacting your your uh, your career? Yeah, hard to, hard to add to that, Matthew, but I will mm -hmm. say that, of course, I uh, the, the principles and the people in the community this are... This is your um, two-minute warning. If you haven't found a date yet, it's time to get moving. <laughs> gotcha. Go ahead. Now, you know, I always seek to find a uh, connection through or another Rotary member when I'm. This is your uh, two-minute warning. If you haven't found uh, a date to, yet, uh, it's solve time a to problem, get moving. Uh, expand an idea, uh, brainstorm, and then uh, of course finding opportunities to serve the community, uh, serve others, uh, and um, uh, it, it's just such a, a, a wonderful group of people. All righty, everyone. Uh, Gene, anything to add to that? Uh, or are you ready for the final um, toss? I would just question. echo, you know, knowing most of the people on this call personally, it is a great organization. I appreciate the Zoom calls as well um, for when days get backed up. And uh, you know what? It's kind of like religion to me. Um, you know, there's no downside to this. They're good things. They're good morals, values. And if we all just practice the four-way test, everyone in the world, it would be a much better place on a daily basis. That's it. Oh, amen. Wouldn't that be just fantastic? I suspect there'd be a lot less people killing each other. Um, okay, final toss-up question. As you heard, there's less than two minutes on the clock. Uh, for, for those of you who are retirees, nonprofit leaders, business owners, or just uh, people trying to feed a family, how is inflation affecting you? You guys paying higher wages? You paying more for new talent, signing bonus and bonuses? You finding it difficult to get funding? Um, for for uh, nonprofits or for biotech ventures, is that funding that funding retirees? You doing anything different? Uh, you know, like uh, not coming to Rotary meetings and staying home on Zoom? Just toss, jump in there. Anybody who has an answer, go for it. I will pick somebody. Ah. <laughs> uh, Alrighty, uh, Gary, any issues with inflation, higher wages? You having some issues getting some employees, having some issues getting that funding? Yeah, yeah, all of the above. Um, and if it's if it's not me directly, right, well, thank you, everyone. Directly, it's our vendors. Let's get let's get let's wrap it up. Alrighty, um, Gene, anything? Inflation issues? I'll invite Cindy back. Right. Well, thank you, everyone. Let's get. Let's get, let's wrap it up. I'll invite Cindy back up to the podium. Thanks everybody. All righty, let's give Luke and Heather a round of applause for this great networking event. Oops. And if I could have them please come up to the podium, I have a little gift for you. Viva la, 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 vi
It's you, Heather. It's you keep bringing on. Koozie. So, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. And without further ado, I welcome past president Chuck Mann back up to the podium for today's Chuck's Chuckles. President Cindy. <clears throat> Here's some Halloween fun featuring Terry Garr, Marty Feldman, Peter Boyle, and Gene Wilder. Starring in Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Uh, it's uh, made in 1974. It was co-written by Wilder and Mel Brooks. Directed by Mel Brooks. Uh, the st first studio that looked at it the, when Brooks said he wanted it in black and white, turned it down, and it went to another studio, and they made a ton of money because they allowed him to film it in black and white. Um, if this isn't, it's on the AFI, AFI American Film Institute's top 20 of 100 funniest movies of all time. If you don't have this at home, consider buying it. Uh, in the first clip, towards the end of the first clip, and you're not going to know where the end is, but keep an eye on the monster and Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> As, they're, as, they're, as the other people in the scene are guessing. Just watch the two of them. It, they do something which is sort of funny. Uh, in the last clip, Igor, played by Marty Feldman, breaks into a lab to get a brain for the monster. While in the process of doing that, drops it on the floor, the glass shatters, the brain goes all over the place. And uh, he grabs another brain. So here we go. Good. What is it? What's the matter? Quick, give him the. Quick, give him the. Watch, give him the watch. Three syllables. First syllable sounds like. Head. Uh, sounds like head. Bed. Uh, said. 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 Second syllable. Little bird. Uh, this. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Said, uh, said, uh, dirty word. He said a dirty word. Oh, sounds oh, like, uh, to give. Said, give. said, uh, give. Oh. Give him a said, a give. Oh, give, give, said, a give. On the nosy. Oh. Said I give? You were right. It's coming from behind this wall. Where is it? Where is it? That! There's always a device. If I can just spot the triggering mechanism. Hello? It seems louder over here. Hand me that candle, will you? Put the candle back. All right. I think I have it figured out now. Take out the candle and I'll block the bookcase with my body. Now listen to me very carefully. Don't put the candle back. With all of your might, shove against the other side of the bookcase. Is that perfectly clear? I think so. Good girl. Well, that brain that you gave me, was it Hans Delbrooks? No. Ah, good. 
Uh, would you mind telling me whose brain I did put in? And you won't be angry? I will not be angry. Abby someone. Abby someone. Abby who? Abby normal. Abby normal. I'm almost sure that was the name. <laughs> Are you saying that I put an abnormal brain into a seven and a half foot long, 54 inch wide gorilla? What? Is that what you're telling me? Wait, wait, get him up. What? Three syllables, yes. All righty. Uh, there is no meeting next week in honor of Veterans Day, and we'll actually be celebrating Veterans Day on the 14th as our presenter that day, uh, Pilot James Dettinger, is a veteran, and he'll be talking to us about the state of the airlines starting after the 9-11 aftermath. There's one committee meeting today. Uh, environmental services will be meeting here in this room. Um, I wish all of you a very happy Halloween, and I thank you for joining us today. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.